Whenever I'm ready, Lana, what's the time? 45, perfect. Okay, so uh, hi everyone, welcome. Um, giving a talk about, as you can see, LLVM and OpenMP. So where are we, what is going on? If you're interested in LLVM and OpenMP, this might be a good thing. Um, I will briefly talk about Clang, Flang and other things that are happening. If you have any questions during your talk, feel free to ask. So what I have actually is a lot of bullet points in the different categories of things that are happening, but I want to answer your questions. So if you have questions now during your talk, ask them. Otherwise, ask them afterwards. That's fine as well. Okay, let's do this. First of all, there is a new web page. New is, generally speaking, that shows you all the OpenMP 5.0 features um, that we are implementing if we are done, if we are currently working on it, or what's the status is. And if you want to take a look, it roughly looks like this. So we categorize them into various different categories, um, OMT, OMT, tasking, device extensions, mostly device extensions. A green is done, red is usually unclaimed, nobody is currently working on it, as far as we know, and yellow means people are working on it. Um, you get f additional information in case you need it, you want to look at the reviews, you want to look at the patches, you find most of the stuff in here. Okay, so again, that is this link, but if you just Google OpenMP support Clang, you will find this. Okay, let's go forward. Let's get rid of that one. So testing. So one big thing that we're currently trying to enact is a testing infrastructure. Right now our testing in o like LLVM OpenMP is really bad, and at least community testing. So we have the hardware all basically ready to build build pods for offloading, and we'll get to offloading in a second. Um, we will do community-owned community-owned build pods that actually run OpenMP, that build everything, that offload everything, that do like first correctness tests, we get into performance testing later. Um, we will have, okay, what, what else do we have? We don't have even parallelism tests right now because the LLVM test suite doesn't really support the use case that your tests are parallel. It kind of like, it's a little bit tricky, it's just infrastructure changes that are going on. We integrate the VNV performance, uh, the VNV verification and validation test suite into the LLVM test suite. Uh, right now, um, and we have the last point here is a host backend. So we have a device runtime library that is compiled for your device. Let's say it's written in CUDA, and you compile it for your for your NVIDIA hardware. And now, once you do that, you lose a little bit of um, otherwise cool capabilities. That is, for example, sanitizers, red sanitizers. Is is like there's research, sure, but we have a lot of tooling that works on the host that we would like to reuse. And one thing we're currently doing is we want to have a host backend for the device runtime library, which where we can check almost all of the device runtime library through sanitizer builds. So we can run them as if we are going to the device, but we're not. Like we stay in the host and then all the sanitizers work. Oh yeah. Uh, optimizations. So this is, this is uh, always an interesting topic. Uh, there's various various kinds of optimizations going on for OpenMP, not only for OpenMP, but especially for OpenMP. They are the ones that are more uh, sequential optimizations, so standard optimizations you would like to see anyway, like constant propagation into a parallel region. Right now, you take any compiler you want, at least any compiler I could find, it will not propagate a constant into a parallel region. If there is one, please show it to me. If you turn on this flag, LLVM will do that and it will do more. So all these, like a lot of these scalar optimizations will just happen to work once you turn this on. It will be turned on automatically uh, by default soonish. As soon as I get like, it's, it's more or less a compile time issue. So I have to work a little bit on compile time problems, but like you pay like 3% or so. So it will not like hurt you too much, but you get actually all the good things you want and you will actually get more, not only parallelism optimization, but this will just be better interprocedural optimization. That is what it will actually be. Okay, then there's OpenMP aware uh, optimization. So things that actually kind of change the way parallelism is executed, change the uh, things that are aware of the OpenMP runtime calls, what they mean, what they do, deduplicating runtime calls, expanding parallel regions to like mitigate the, the startup costs and merging parallel loops. All of these things fall in that category. Uh, the patches are under review right now, so you can take a look. Once they go in, which should be in a week or two from now, at least for these things, um, you will be able to just, like, they will just run automatically. Like, oh, your OpenMP code will just get that. That's it. Target offloading. Uh, we have 
right now in mainline LLVM support for three different offload targets. So you can offload to your host here, your like, ex like host like accelerator, multi-core, which is roughly the same thing. And you can offload to NVIDIA GPUs. Um, we are in the process of restructuring the device runtime library such that it's easier to add more targets, for example, a host target. And AMD is doing a lot of that heavy lifting, and we should get there that we this year can offload to AMD with LLVM Clang mainline. There is already open source versions that can do that, but merge everything in and offload to AMD. Uh, we have support for math functions in your target regions, like, like the actual NVIDIA math like intrinsics and, and implementations uh, will work. Also, other kind of target-specific code will work. Like you could basically write CUDA inside a, a target region that goes onto an NVIDIA device. That will roughly work in Clang. Um, but there is a caveat here that is the way we enabled the math function support caused us a problem with regard. Like some math functions will work, and sometimes you run into really complex errors that you have to like, manually declare symbols or not. It's, it's a little weird, and it will be fixed as soon as we implement one of the TR8 features. So we got it into TR8, which will be 5.1 standard. And one of those features, we need to actually implement the OpenMP implementation for math functions. So I, we go that way. It took us a little bit longer, but that will happen. Uh, static linking is a little bit problematic still. We're working on that actively to do static linking, multi-target uh, multi fed binaries, and all of these, all of these fancy things. Okay. Okay, so Fortran, the, fan fa the favorite here, right? That is the, the Fortran crowd. Um, so we'll have new Flang, uh, currently still known as F18, or at least the repository it lives in is, 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 known, uh, is named F18. And that will become new Flang, or Flang, once we move, which should happen in a month. Let's assume it happens in a month, this year. We move F18 into the LLVM Mono repository, call it Flang. And then old Flang, legacy Flang, is all but dead. It's already all but dead. So you can use it to offload, you can use it for OpenMP, but there is little to no support anymore forward, going forward. Like development basically has completely moved to F18, and everyone involved is actually actively looking into F18. Um, There's a little bit oversimplified, but roughly gives you the gist. Um, what we do is we have parsing support for OpenMP are basically done. Uh, we have semantic analysis, like the, be the beginnings of semantic analysis for OpenMP, but there's a lot of work to do in that, in that area. And what we, what we decided to do and what we started to do is we ripped out the code generation out of Clang and put it in a different place such that we can reuse it, the OpenMP code generation, such that once we get the semantic analysis up and running, we basically can get code generation actually work in code way faster because we will, we will reuse all the infrastructure that is there. Okay? So we will have target offloading like, on, like only a short period after, after we start to have semaphore. Um, how we do that with, with the, with the uh, ripping the code generation out and reusing it between different front ends, it's the open PIR builder for the lack of a better name. Um, you will task it to build you LLVMIR for a directive. Let's say I want LLVMIR for a parallel or a parallel four or a ta task or a target, and it does this for you. So you don't need to care how it actually looks, what runtime calls are involved. We can change them like, easily without you ever noticing. And it can be used by other front ends as well. So even if you just want to use the OpenMP runtime and for offloading purposes out of your language that is not C, C++ or Fortran, you could do that. If you have an automatic parallelizer and you want to go for the OpenMP, like go through the OpenMP runtime, you could do that. So you now have like a very nice functionality and a nice API based on the directives of OpenMP inside the compiler that can be reused by, by different, by different uh, players here. Um, we have patches that are accepted and will be merged. We have some patches that are under review. And obviously, there is now a lot of work to do because we have to rip out every single code, genera code generation part. Um, I mentioned this briefly earlier. Um, AMD is doing a redesign of the device runtime library, mostly AMD. What's happening is um, we want to have a common core of the logic of the device runtime library that is basically C++ code. Roughly every, and, and like 
you interpret it as CUDA if you want to, but it's roughly C++ code. And there's target-specific parts that live somewhere else. If you, if you add a new target, you just like, kind of fill out this, these functions and you're, you're up and running. So it it's should allow us to get us AMD fast and afterwards other GPU vendors for sure. And then other than GPUs, we have to look and see what how to reuse between non-GPU targets and GPU targets will look like. Mostly now, it's everything is, is kind of tailored towards GPUs. Um, while we do this, we will actually also change the API on that layer, or at least layer it and add like more abstraction uh, abstractions on it to get better optimizations there like, and help the optimizers to actually change your offloading code. Uh, was it? That might be it. Yeah. That was, that was the last of them. So those are all the kind of different areas that are currently under active development. If you have any questions on them, sure. You mentioned that uh, you want to create a kind of device offload for the host to use the sanitizers and that stuff. Will that be a separate memory space or running as a separate process? Or are you going to share memory because that way you, I think, lose a lot of the capabilities that you could get? I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you for sure because we haven't started to do that yet. So I know one person that looked into doing that after we had the idea, but uh, I'm, I don't have details on how it will look like. I would not have thought that we need to do to share like to do different memory spaces. I would have thought it would be fine if just like you sanitize your whole application, including the runtime. Like we do that at least for testing purposes. Like people would not necessarily do that, but like for our stress testing, we could have a build on CI build that does that with thread sanitizer enabled, and then we catch all these nasty bugs where we do stuff wrong. Other question? Okay. Thank you, guys.